I'm calling the Wednesday, April 8th, 2020 Select Board meeting to order. Good evening, everyone. We're coming okay. to you again remotely, and we will be meeting on a weekly basis going forward during the pandemic. We will be meeting on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, with the exception of next Tuesday, April 14th, when we have a public hearing scheduled. I want to wish a happy Passover to those celebrating the holiday. This is the first night of Passover when traditionally our families get together for a celebration. The coronavirus has shifted our plans pretty dramatically so that we will be having virtual seders. For my family, we, we shifted our seders from Wednesday and Thursday to Thursday and Friday. My apologies if I offended anyone by having this meeting tonight, which I would not have done in more regular times. I also want to wish a happy Easter to, to those celebrating on Sunday. I just wanted to read a quick note that was sent to me about our celebrations um, at this time, be it for Passover, Easter, or other holidays. This is what came up to me today. Dear Mark, this year, instead of asking why this night is different from any other night, we may be asking ourselves, why is this Passover different from any other in history? The answer is that more people than ever before are sharing a virtual Seder or celebration with family and friends. In the true spirit of community and faith, we found a way to come together, even when we must celebrate far apart. Uh, on the agenda for tonight, we will first uh, have a couple of uh, quick announcements uh, by Bob, then we'll go through feedback from last week's meeting and how we can improve from that. The agenda included an item on public participation via email, and we will read comments and questions raised if there aren't too many to handle live. All emails to the board become a part of the public record and are included in our next packet. Then Kevin Sexton from the Board of Health uh, will provide an update on the board's activities with a chance for the board to ask questions. Bob will then provide a COVID-19 update. We will then move to discussion of select board liaison assignments and how to make them most effective. Our plan is to agree uh, to those assignments at our meeting on April 14th. Next will be a discussion about the appointment process to volunteer boards during the state of emergency. Last item is to discuss our select board communications policy as was brought up at our, at our last meeting. So uh, Bob, did you wanna make your, your comments first? We'll start with that. Thank you, Mark. Um, two quick points, and then I want to read a short memo. Um, first, um, some very good news on Meals on Wheels. Yesterday, for about two or three hours during the day, there was a crisis. It had stopped. Um, 26 communities scrambled to try to fill that void, and no meals were delivered yesterday. Um, thank you for our staff for making other arrangements, especially for Stop and Shop being so helpful. Uh, but happily, uh, everything is back on track today. But that's just a reminder of how quick Michael rely on a meal. Um, secondly, the community should be aware that the trial uh, road diet is beginning tonight. Um, it's actually in two sections. The south section is going to be working at nights. That's south of um, Haven Street, south of the train tracks. And the northern section, uh, north of the fire station, will be working during the day. Um, we will have uh, further updates next week at the select board meeting from staff in terms of the public uh, participation, which is clearly significantly different now than it was before. Um, and then finally, uh, Mark asked me to read um, a letter that I released today. Uh, sadly, late yesterday, I learned we have lost a member of the community to the COVID-19 virus. Many of our neighboring communities have also suffered similar losses, but this news brings it home to all of us. Please take a moment today to reflect for the grieving family at this most difficult time. Further details are not available out of respect for the family and friends of the deceased. News at the international, national and state levels has for weeks told us how serious this COVID-19 virus is. And it's passed along many suggestions on how each of us can and should minimize the impact. Sadly, now that same news has become very personal and very local. Reading has been monitoring and posting COVID-19 information in the community for a couple of months. Uh, if you go to the homepage, readingma.gov, you can't miss it at the top, it's a red banner. There's a lot of resources listed. Many of you have taken the advice to socially distance, which is the single most powerful action any of us can take, and thank you for that. Some folks in town still recreate and gather in groups when the weather is nice. We've been blessed by a few days of rain. This is the single biggest complaint that I've received over the past month. For those that find it difficult to stay home and keep your family's future safer, please reflect for a moment about those on the front line fighting to save our friends and neighbors. They risk their family's future for all of us and often work until exhaustion makes them literally fall to the floor just to get a moment's rest. 
every time you stay home with your family, you improve their chances of getting home to see theirs. Thank you for the fantastic Neighbors Helping Neighbors outreach we've seen in the community and the support you've shown for our organization. If you and anyone you know needs help with human elder services concerns, please email us at uh, covid-19help at ci.reading.ma.us. And that is on the uh, uh, red banner link as well as a phone number. Thank you. That's all I have, Mark. Thanks, Bob. Sorry, I had myself muted for the moment. <laughs> I'm unmuted now. Um, what I'd like to do is why don't we talk a little bit about um, feedback from the last meeting and then we'll shift over to you, Kevin, because I think uh, Bob will do his COVID-19 updates right after you and that, that puts it together. So um, from uh, board members, we'd love to hear your feedback on uh, the good and the bad of last meeting, things that you'd like to see changed or improved. So please, anyone chime in. I thought the meeting went smoothly last week and I really appreciated your efforts, Mark, working together with me, Bob and uh, Bill at RCTV to get this uh, format up and running. I thought it went smoothly. Um, certainly we've heard folks request that we be more transparent in, in the public comment section and reading aloud uh, the names and addresses of those who have submitted comments such that they're not uh, anonymously addressed. Um, so that's, I'm comfortable with us proceeding in that fashion for one. Thanks, Ann. Carlo, do you have comments? No, I think Mark, I you know, sent you a message uh, that night. You did a great job last week. Everyone was present and a lot of information was given. And I think we just need to continue that. I'm glad we're meeting weekly and um, just need to move forward and reiterate what Bob said about the gatherings. I think I don't think we can stress that enough. And as the weather gets nicer in the coming weeks, um, I heard the governor today, the peak is gonna be from the 10th, I think to the 20th, right around there, they expect the peak to be that. And all the supermarkets are changing their guidelines and the stores are changing their guidelines, making one-way streets in the supermarkets themselves to avoid people uh, interacting too closely with each other. So I think we need to do our best as families to stay together, go for walks together. You can play a sport together with your own family, but we need to um, do what Bob suggested and really uh, protect it. Thanks, Carla. Vanessa, do you have some comments, please? Hi, Mark, thanks. Uh, I thought the last meeting went really well. I've also heard that um, from the public comment perspective, people would like um, us to address that a little bit better. So I agree with Anne in, in addressing that. Um, be on that, nice job. <laughs> Thank you. Karen. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> as I told you after the meeting, I was, I was thrilled we were able to meet like this under these circumstances and um, I did hear um, that Zoom is working to close some kind of gaps that might have caused trouble for other um, organizations trying to use this technology. And um, that major organizations um, in the city of New York are still using Zoom. So, um, you know, it's being a stress test, if you will. So um, that opens up opportunities for us to um, do other meetings this way as well as long as we have to so I, I really appreciate all the work you put into this and um, the comments are coming in and we can see them so so at least we're able to um, have some public participation so thank you oh, you're welcome so um, I think my take was was similar um, and the comment about indicating the name and address of, of folks who were sending in emails I think we should be able to accommodate that I, I think that if we had a, a slew of 50 emails, it might be more difficult, but um, as they stay modest, I think that's a great suggestion in terms of how to improve things. Um, just a quick question, Bob, you had um, mentioned that you were checking with some of your peers to see if they have tried some other ways and maybe have found things that do or don't work that could be helpful to us. Yeah, and, and su surprisingly, I, I sent it out to 20 and got only two responses. Um, one was what we're doing, and one was we don't allow public participation. Hmm. So very low uh, response, which was a little surprising. 
I don't think there's a lot of public hearings going on right now until people really conquer that. And, and we will have something for the board next week to discuss um, how to run a public hearing for some of your other boards as well as yourselves that may address some, you know, some of the concerns you've heard. Great, thanks. Um, so I think, why don't we try to uh, accommodate exactly what, what you folks have spoken about, which is to um, continue to accept emails. We can read the name and address um, with the email and, and manage that for, for now at least in terms of, of public comment. We'll see if there are other ways that we can accommodate better. I think that this in some ways is the most similar to how we conduct our meetings regularly, where um, we'll create a, a few minutes at the beginning of the meeting to allow for public comment. And then if there are particular topics that we're going through, there may be an opportunity for public comment on those as well. So great. Um, okay, thank you very much, everybody. Um, why don't we shift it to Kevin Sexton, who is a member of the, the Board of Health. And Kevin, if you could share with us some updates uh, from the board, we'd appreciate that. Certainly. Um, I just wanted to go over a, a couple things before I give you the updates that we have from the board. Um, again, we wish everybody a happy Passover. I wish this was under better circumstances. Uh, obviously, as a board, when it comes to um, these major holidays like Easter and Passover, we hope that folks will um, will do their part and stay home and, and do what they can to digitally meet um, with, with family rather than physically meet with family. So we hope everyone will be doing that and hope everybody enjoys those holidays. Um, the one thing I really want to, you know, let people know is that, you know, we will get through this. Um, I think it's important to hear that while we're in the, the thick of it right now, it, if everybody sticks together and, and, and continues to follow CDC guidelines, um, we certainly will get through this. Um, and it's really important, I think, for the folks that are listening and tuning in to the meeting to know just how diligently the town staff um, has been working in regards to this pandemic. And, and that's really across the board through all departments. They have been phenomenal. Um, they have been working as a cohesive unit. Um, we've been working alongside them um, with our meetings, which we've had plenty of, um, to, to do everything we can to protect the residents of this town. Um, but I did wanna just uh, let people know, you know, that may, maybe haven't heard or tuned in, there is a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, what we're gonna try to motion towards is a little bit uh, from the Board of Health standpoint anyways, is moving more in towards an education standpoint. So we wanna let folks know exactly what's going on, but um, I want them to feel rest assured that there, there is some very talented people uh, working extremely hard. Uh, I'll say that before I go into the updates. Uh, as far as the updates go, um, I'll start off with our latest cases. Um, Bob, unfortunately, did uh, reference that we had our first death in Reading and certainly feel um, our hearts go out to that family um, that is dealing with this. As of today, we are uh, the number of cases that we ha have is uh, at 53. Um, we just started to get caught up a little bit on clearing some cases. So good news is we had eight cases come off um, today, um, which is good. Um, eight healthy cases come off today. Uh, unfortunately, we did have eight more come on. So it was a net negative on the number, essentially. Um, right now, the biggest priority that the health division is, is working with is uh, contact tracing. Uh, for those who uh, haven't heard that term before that are listening, contact tracing is what happens when somebody tests positive um, at the doctor's office. The doctor's office then uh, calls uh, the state and the state uploads it into a system called Maven. Um, our trained nurses can then go into that system, pull that person's information, reach out to them, contact them, and find out who they've been in contact with. And that's really the contact tracing component to it, to try to inform people that have been in close proximity um, to them for over 15 minutes of, of time to let them know that they have been um, potentially exposed uh, to somebody who tested positive. So it's it's a lot of um, it's a it's a lot of work. Unfortunately, partly because of the Maven system that the state has set up, I guess is very complex to run through, uh, to say the least. So you you have to be trained in it. But even once you've got trained in it, you you still have a hard time going through it um, and getting the information that you need. So um, right now, that's kind of the priority of our. Um, of our staff and I, I give um, a big credit to the schools who 
made all of the uh, town nurses uh, available to, uh, to our resource to help do this contact tracing. It's one of the bigger things to help try to stop a spread um, from one infected person uh, to those who aren't and, and, and wouldn't know it. So this is kind of an important part of it. And um, the fact that we have this staff on and, and training is great. So right now we had to get two folks um, up and running because it, um, I'm sure, I mean, probably let you know last week that we do have a new um, nurse, full-time nurse for the health department. And she just is going through and getting uh, up and running on uh, the Maven system, as well as the uh, head school nurse is, is um, already up and running on it as well. Um, but we wanted to make sure we had some redundancy here. And that was a big component and um, issue for us because Maven is so complex, we really needed some folks that could help us and assist us, or I should say assist the nurses um, that it may have some, even, even though they've been trained on it, that still may have some difficulty getting through the system. Um, so uh, our assistant town manager, uh, Gene Delios, was able to um, reach out and to the Peabody Public Health Nurse and the Gloucester Public Health Director um, to be able to assist our nurses if they run into um, um, issues with Maven for questions they may have, they can call them and find out find out um, the answers to them. So that was a that was a really uh, a big thing for us to be able to make sure we have some support staff, which is great. Um, we also uh, the DPH also has a um, an email and a designated desk um, just for Maven for support for the nurses. Um, that are, are using the system. So we have that resource as well. And then uh, the last thing we, we thought was a good idea was to make sure that we maybe had even more redundancy. So we have two nurses right now going through the Maven training. We don't plan to use them in the system because it's a, it's a lot better to have less contact through that system. So information doesn't get doubled up on or, or, or missed. Uh, it's a lot easier to have just a few people in there but we wanted to make sure that if something happens and somebody else needs to step in, we have that capability. So we're training two other nurses, uh, as well as our health um, agent, um, Laura Vlask is getting, uh, Vlask, excuse me, is getting um, trained on it as well. So she can um, also uh, look into the system to update. Um, she can't actually, she's not a nurse, so she can't actually contact, uh, but she can update our emergency dispatch um, that we have a new case um, so they can they can update their records and they they can um, track the houses where these where, where this is happening uh, obviously for public um, so that's that's where we are right now with the um, uh, with our nursing staff contract tracing um, that's going underway um, which like I said is is a big priority for us right now um, Next things that we're going to be doing, we are having a meeting on uh, this coming Friday at 10 a.m. Some of the topics on there, ones that you've probably heard recently in the news, um, that we're going to look into requiring sufficient receptacles and um, making sure customers can uh, properly dispose of plastic gloves um, at grocery stores, which is becoming a, an issue. We're also going to be looking into requiring safety plans at construction sites. It's a couple of our topics coming up. Um, as well. The shifting into is more of an education standpoint that we're looking to do. Uh, one of our members, Elena Shankoff, is working with uh, Matt Cornelis and Jane Wellman, and we're going to be working um, a lot with them to try to get more information pushed out there to the public from an education standpoint. Uh, I'm sure most of you are paying attention to this um, as much as all of us are. Uh, it's amazing what changes in the day. A day feels like a week um, with, with the way information is changing. So we want to make sure we can stay out in front of it as best we can and, and inform the public as best we can. We feel like that's our, uh, at this point, um, that's our best role moving forward um, with, um, um, with, as far as board's capability. So uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them as best I can. Thanks, Kevin. I just also want to reiterate that um, obviously the board will be uh, sending out information and releases on their own. But in addition, the board uh, will have a member come and join each of the select board meetings going forward so that there'll be someone uh, available to answer questions that are coming up. So uh, do board members have questions, please? Karen, go ahead. Is that for me or for Karen? I saw Karen raise her hand and 
was that for you yeah, recognizing go Karen? <laughs> Karen, why don't you go first? Um, okay, thanks. Um, so um, I got an update that um, Wilmington has, the Board of Health has been able to offer a masks to all businesses in their town, uh, which is, wow. sounds like a great thing to be able to do. So I was wondering if um, we've been able to apply and, and for and receive any grants from the state of through FEMA or MEMA, I know, so not quite sure where they would come from, but um, I know some towns are starting to get some funds for personal protective equipment for the cases where you need to find emergency housing for somebody that needs to be quarantined. Also, I noted um, the extra cleaning that our staff is doing can also be reimbursed. So I was wondering if we have any applications in or if we've already received some help. Well, as far as um, I don't know that we were well, at least it has been mentioned to us that we have any applications in for um, any any kind of uh, PPE. Um, but I, I know Bob can speak to the fact that we are um, monitoring what our output is monetarily to see if there's gonna be any re reimbursements of that on the back end. Um, but in the forefront right now, I'd have to look into that, Karen, and I can certainly do that and get back to you to see if, if that's something we're able to do. Um, I'll definitely reach out to Wilmington and find out where, where they're getting it from as well too. That, that's, that's an interesting note to hear. Okay, thank um, you. Mark, if I might. Um, in terms of the grants or funds, uh, the Board of Health is supposed to receive some funds directly. We have not seen those yet. Those are federal funds. Um, everything else is going to take a longer amount of time, and we're not we're not not doing anything because we don't have the money. We have plenty of money to spend. Fincom, uh, you know, put a hundred thousand in our budget extra, so it's not a lack of resources that that causes anything right now. I'm really surprised Wilmington could get their hands on that many masks. I don't know what kind they are, but. Um, our fire department has just barely been able to get enough for themselves, uh, for the police department, and recently over the weekend for some of the assisted living facilities for the staff there. So um, stuff is very tight. It's a three to five week backlog just for emergency personnel. So I'm not sure how Wilmington did that, or if they're less formal medical masks, if you will. Yeah, they might not be N95 masks. Oh, I don't think they're N95. Okay. I'm sure, they're just whatever they could make available. But I'd be happy to share that email with you. Okay. Uh, but it is just coming from their board of health. Okay. And I think you have some comments. Yes, I had a question about Maven training and access. It seems like who has access is constantly evolving. So I was wondering if you could clarify uh, where we stand now in, in, in terms of who has both training and access uh, to do the contact tracing. Sure. Um, so right now we're using um, a few sources. Up until um, the 1st of April, we have been, um, uh, we've been using the uh, Malden's um, nurse mm -hmm. to help us do contact tracing through right. Maven um, and as we're transitioning through our new nurse and getting the training done uh, there. So. Um, there, Malden is still uh, handling everything um, pre for um, the 1st of April uh, okay. for us. And now we're, we have um, two people that we have are trained in Maven. So we have the head school nurse uh, who's trained in Maven. We also have our new nurse who's trained in Maven. Again, no, I guess, you know, I've talked to several people on this. I guess it is a, a very complex system, which, you know, maybe that should be addressed when this is all said and done. Um, at the state level, but th that's where we wanted to make sure we had plenty of not only training, but we had plenty of support. So we, the, the two folks that we have in there, they are trained, they are, we are accessing Maven, we, we haven't had any um, drop off as far as our ability to get into the system and, and make sure that we're finding out, um, you know, who's testing positive in town so we can go ahead and find out with, from them their contacts and notify them. Um, about it. So that, that from April first to or for cases from April first to now, the the two the, our, our own public health nurse and one of the school nurses is that right? Correct. Have tr are trained and have access. Uh, are trained access and working on contact yeah, tracing okay. um, from that first on. Correct. Okay. And, and and from a redundancy standpoint, then we have we have two other um, um, nurses that are training. We have. Um, I think one school nurse that we have in training, and then the other one is 
Um, I think it's our, our nurse the advocate. Advocate, right? Yeah, the nurse yeah. advocate, um, as well as our own health agent. You know, she she can't access it like a nurse can, uh, but she wanted to be able to make sure she could access it um, from a public safety standpoint um, to get that information over to emergency uh, dispatch in a prompt and timely manner. Because, you know, the, the problem with Maven is not only is it complex, but there's also some lag time, uh, maybe a day or two that, that can go by from when this, the test is positive at, at the doctor's office or facility, wherever it might be, and the doctor gets it over to the state, the state gets the information into the system to go pull it. Um, the other problem with it, which, which would be a nice fix, is there's no ping um, to us, so to speak. So, oh, Reading just got, got another one, and all of a sudden our health agent got an email. Hey, somebody was just uploaded into Maven. So you have to physically keep going into the system throughout the day, and it's a tough system, I guess, to navigate. So it's kind of, it, it's a little bit of a, um, sounds like a little bit of a, a, not red tape thing, but it's certainly a little, little bit of a state issue there from the, um, making sure we get back to the town as fast as we can. So um, from that point, they, they take it and they run with it and they, they reach out to the individual and they start their contact tracing um, ASAP. Does it, is there any value in looking at, I am sure that all of these individuals are in extremely high demand right now, but um, getting anyone else on staff or do you, does the Board of Health feel we're covered in that regard for them? Is it kind of like a moment to moment, a day by day thing you have to make sure? Ask me tomorrow. Yeah. 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 So the way we, the way we told, instructed our um, health agent, we said, we really want to know what the nurses are doing. We, you know, check in on them on a regular basis. They're the ones that are going to tell us we're, we're getting swamped. This isn't going to be right. safe. And, and just so uh, everyone's aware, we have the full complement of, of all the uh, school nurses um, and including our own. Um, and again, thank you to the schools for doing that. Um, great, greatly um, expedites us getting out there and doing the contact tracing. But as of right now, um, the um, head school nurse has decided to not implement all of them as of right now. Right now. Um, so we're not at that point where, you know, they're starting to get overwhelmed. And we have some folks that are kind of sitting in the wings as well, too. So while everyone's kind of getting, um, um, used to this contact tracing you know it, it's not every single one is training at the same time on or, or doing it at the same time and needs to at this point so the good thing is we do have some folks that are sitting in the wings ready to go uh, if, if it feels like they're starting to get overwhelmed but that was a big concern of ours as well we said you just just make sure you stay on them and make sure they understand we need to know if they start to like feel like they're gonna lag behind right i i, I guess i was wondering about posting positions so that there would be rather than when the need arose to posting a, a position and then there being a vacancy but it sounds like with the school nurses there are individuals who will be ready to go should um the need arise is that your understanding that's my understanding yeah um and and uh, we'll probably do a lot more in the next couple of days okay. to tell you the truth um so you know we can certainly um, round back with you next Wednesday as well too. Okay. I think we'll have some better uh, data and, and more information in regards to that that type of need. Um, you know, it, it seems like they've got it pretty well covered as of right now. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Clarify, we're, we're next Tuesday. Tuesday. Next oh, your Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. Anything else, Ann? Uh, that that the, those were my questions. Thank you, Mark. Right. Thank Carlo. you. Let me. Let me... Kevin, have there been any comments, uh, positive or negative, for our restaurants in town that you're aware of? Um, none that I'm aware of, Carlo. Um, I'm trying to think, of any positive or negative comments? No, I mean, none that I'm aware of. Uh, the one thing I will say, the, the restaurants um, um, around town, as well as the, the supermarkets, you know, we've had our inspectors out there. Um, obviously, there's been a lot more guidelines that they need to adhere to um and and they've been excellent um you know um some of them needed a lot of coaching at first and i wouldn't say uh, necessarily restaurants um, um some convenience stores certainly need to, you know were lagging on uh, marking off on you know, six foot areas for customers and for employees to to be with and, and you know so we, we deployed our inspectors out there to to work with them and and make sure that they understood exactly what they needed to do if they were intending on staying open. 
a lot of them obviously closed. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, that's unfortunate for them. It certainly helped us from an inspectional standpoint, being able to handle uh, the amount of folks that are open um, to educate them. And, and that, that's, been, that's been pretty good. I, we've, we really haven't gotten any pushback. Um, most folks are just you know, looking to try to um, keep afloat during this time, quite frankly, no. and, but they're, they're adhering to everything we're asking of them. Okay, thanks. Vanessa, do you have some comments? I do. Um, first, Kevin, I just want to thank you for the update today. I know this has been a um, tremendous amount of work for, for you and I mean, Eleanor and the staff, so thank you. Um, I do have two questions. Um, does the town have a stance on construction? I got a question from a resident as to um, if we are planning on stopping construction. I know Boston did. Um, and I think the town has a lot, has stopped unnecessary work within uh, managed by the town. But what about construction beyond us? Uh, yeah, I can, I can I respond to that one. <clears throat> um, Kevin hasn't yet seen the draft. I just saw a four page policy for the Board of Health to review on Friday. Okay. Um, according to last week's uh, legislation, uh, no city or town has any legal right to stop construction, but there are guidelines by which construction can continue. Um, town Council's drafted a policy that differentiates uh, small and large sites based on about, I think it's 10 employees. If the Board of Health and or building inspectors upon an inspection feel that the policy the board may adopt is being violated, only then may a construction site be, be shut down. Um, so again, the Board of Health will have a lot of discussion on that on Friday. And, and Kevin, if you haven't seen it yet, I'm sure we'll send it out either tonight or tomorrow morning. Yeah, please do. I, have, I haven't seen that, but I knew we, just, okay. I just, we had the, um, the agenda item for Friday. That's all I was going to tell you. We haven't okay. even had a chance to discuss it as of yet, Vanessa. Great, thank you. Um, and then my second question, uh, Bob, you mentioned that um, masks are, are perhaps a a point of concern right now for public safety. There's been a lot of traffic on social media as far as homemade masks. Is that something that our public safety officers would be interested in? Is that something the community can do to help? Um, no, they are not allowed to use homemade masks. They have to use the N95s, but thank you. We, we have, um, through some of the um, help uh, offered and help needed uh, emails and phone numbers, we have been able to connect some people in town um, some that are making the masks and some that wanted the masks. So uh, by all means, the masks are certainly useful to residents and others in town, just not public safety. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Bob. That's all, Mark. Thanks. Word was talking about high density housing, multifamily housing, and, and thinking about outreach to there. Um, have you folks uh, continued that discussion or is that something that may come up on Friday? I'm sure that's going to come up on Friday. Um, I remember leaving it that we were going to try to get some feedback from majority of these places um, to find out what their management companies are already doing. I know that it sounds like the state is already laying out some guidelines for them from a standpoint of continuing to clean um, the, the facilities, at least the ones that are run, um, that are state, state run facilities that we have. We have uh, several of those around town, but we, we really want to make sure that we hit all the complexes as, as you were on that um, at that meeting, Mark. We want to make sure that we're getting not just state-run facilities, but um, condo complexes, apartment complexes that, that are run by um, full-time management companies, especially the large ones. Um, I, to me, I think the biggest thing is to make sure what we're reaching out to them and um, explaining the, uh, what they need to do to ensure the safety of their residents uh, moving forward, which is a lot of cleaning. Um, quite frankly. Um, but I think we, we'll probably round back and get some more feedback on Friday from um, um, reaching out to some of these facilities um, that was going on this week. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions from the board for Kevin? Thanks, Kevin. Really appreciate your coming in. All right, everybody be safe. And Thank you, you, as well. you, Kevin. you as well. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. Um, do you want to do an uh, update from here on uh, town activities, state activities? Sure. I just had a few things. I'll start, if I might, just by reading a, sh a short statement that um, out of respect for today's events, we didn't want to release till tomorrow, but this is about the property tax and water sewer bills. 
Um, at their meeting on April 1st, the select board voted by five to zero their approval of the following motion. You remember what the motion is. Uh, as such, and according to legislation recently passed, so it was passed a couple days after your meeting, a copy of which is attached below, I'm instructing the town collector to accept water, sewer, stormwater payments due on April 15th and property tax payments due on May 1st to be considered as on time if paid by June 1st. Further, payments of interest or other penalties are waived between March 10th and June 30th, 2020 on any such bills issued by the town. So we'll make sure to post that. Um, we have received maybe a half a dozen phone calls uh, in the last day or so from folks. Generally speaking, our collections are still pretty strong. As I mentioned, a lot of mortgage companies make payments automatically, uh, but we'll make sure to get that information out there. And perhaps more importantly in the long run, uh, for anyone having difficulty with payments, uh, please call 781-942-6622. Again, that's if anyone is having difficulty making a payment, either on a property tax bill or a water, sewer, stormwater bill, please call 781-942-6622. Please leave a message if no one answers. Uh, we can make arrangements with payment plans, but under state law, we have certain rules we must follow about interest and penalties but there, there is absolutely ability and we always have some people on payment plans. It's not a problem. Um, we'll do whatever we can to help within the law. That's the first thing. Um, Bob, when you, yes. uh, when you post the information about uh, payments being allowed through June, is it June, I'm sorry, June 3rd? Well, you know, it's interesting, Ann, it's, it's June 1st is the new formal due date, but June 30th is the date for no penalties. So we're not sure why the, legislature passed it that way. Okay. But pay in uh, June is the idea. Okay. Uh, when you post that, could you also post the information about the phone number to call if you'd like to set up a Certainly. payment plan? Thanks. Yes, will do. Yep. If I could just add to that for one second. I know RMLD, um, and Colleen mentioned this at our meeting last week, but RMLD I think is able to do the same thing with payment plans and encourages folks who are having difficulties to contact them directly. That's right, Mark. Thank you. Um, the second one um, I mentioned a little bit briefly with uh, construction, it's a fairly complex area. Um, however, the legislation that the governor signed last week or early this week has made it fairly straightforward. They've especially been helpful in writing up a, uh, an explanation in addition to just the legislation. So, you know, we really do understand, um, you know, what the tools the Board of Health has and the Board of Health inspectors and the building inspectors have. Um, Again, um, you know, the, the state has decided that construction is, a, is an essential service and should continue. Um, you know, we don't have a place in having an opinion on that, but we will make sure that should, should be allowed to, to do that for sites. And the thing I didn't add um, when Kevin was here is um, if, if a violation is found, the site can be shut down immediately. So it's not that it gets some kind of a warning and they can keep doing work and then in a week they have to fix it. The Board of Health can shut them down immediately and I would expect that they would. Um, there is then a time to correct it and the Board of Health must allow construction to restart. So I can be fairly certain that once the construction companies get used to this, if they don't know about it already, they will adapt very quickly or they will not be in business. So I think the construction sites, if they're not safe right now, they will be by Friday when the Board of Health takes action. Um, I don't know if there's any questions on construction. I know a couple of us have received emails. Any questions, folks? No. Nope. Okay, the last thing I had, um, you, you got a lot of information in your packet and, and the, you know, Kevin's right, it's every 24 hours is a whole new adventure, but um, there will be um, some, again, a draft policy for, uh, public hearings presented to you next week. Um, Jean, Julie, and Aaron plan to join you next week and discuss a couple of topics around sort of the commercial sector in town, um, the um, road diet uh, trial and, and some other things. But one of them will be some of the land use boards um, have a much more formal process to use on almost all of their meetings. And uh, the governor uh, last week did sign legislation that allows effectively all the requirements that a town might have uh, to be pushed aside for 45 days after the, the uh, emergent state of emergency ends. Um, that's really important because 
if the state emergency were to end on um, you know tomorrow, often a process of 45 days is needed to restart advertising for public hearings and preparing both parties for public hearings. So it's great that um, the state did a very thoughtful job of allowing 45 days. So again, the board will have an opportunity over the weekend to review some information um, in speaking to town council. The work they've done so far is, is really geared for the land use boards. Um, but in speaking to Ray last night, um, it, is, it is applicable to anyone who holds a public meeting. So it could be you, for instance, uh, your board. Um, and it's a policy that um, if you adopt, you could, you could adopt and probably should adopt uniformly for all the boards you appoint so that everyone has the same set of rules. And you know, perhaps you'll need to get some feedback from those boards where this is a whole new area before it's uh, you know, formally adopted. Um, there are not a lot of public hearings that are urgent in our view. Um, technically, there's none. Legally, there's none. Uh, because again, um, constructive approval was not, uh, you know, has been set aside. But there still are some uh, issues that I'm sure people want to get moving on if they could, if they could safely do so. So you will hear a lot more from our community development staff on that next week. Otherwise, I don't know if you had any questions on legislation. I'm, I'm on about three conference calls a week now, and there's another municipal bill coming up. Um, none of us know a lot of the details, except probably Ann. Um, <laughs> but the state has really done a remarkable job in a very short amount of time to address a lot of issues that are very important to municipalities. We are reaching a very important part of the end of a fiscal year. Um, so it's not like this is um, July or August where we can work things out over the whole year. Um, I was uh, given some reasonable assurance that there would be no state aid cuts in the current fiscal year. It just would not be practical for cities and towns to try to react to that. Um, there was supposed to be a, a hearing on revenue yesterday and there was some technical difficulties, so the hearing had to be rescheduled to next week. Um, I am quite sure, even though the state had a good march, I'm quite sure uh, payments in April will really take a beating. And the state is much more susceptible from a revenue standpoint than the town is. Um, but the state will surely share that with us next year in less state aid. So we are meeting as department heads tomorrow to start discussing contingency plans. I've looked over some things. I am at, at a very minimum going to recommend a different water sewer stormwater budget to town meeting and to you than is currently out there. Um, we absolutely want to defer some of the projects and just ease up on the rate increases. Um, we don't even know how fast we can actually do construction, for instance. So we just want to slow down, um, you know, some of the construction projects, not a lot of them, but a couple of them that can, that are, you know, easy to push. In terms of the budget in front of a town meeting at some point, it's just too early to say. Um, current budget, knowing that we may have to adapt during the year, but finance is going to be something that rightly so comes later, um, but it's important. We'll need to adapt. That's all I have. <clears throat> Thanks, Bob. Any board questions? Anne, go ahead. Sorry. I would just ask, since the town meeting uh, is, in, uh, is on the agenda for next week, that we include some of the legislative update material from Yaris Harrington from this week, again, in next week's packet, because some of it is relevant okay. to what our options are around town meeting. Um, I think there we may have even more options, depending on what comes out of uh, the municipal legislation round three. Um, but certainly with every iteration of municipal legislation, so to date we've seen um, more options for, for, for cities and towns in terms of how they handle town meeting. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. Any other questions from the board? Hi, Mark, I have a question. Please, Vanessa. Um, so as far as the state goes, I, I wanted to recognize um, our state senator, Jason Lewis, as well as our one of our reps, Richard Haggerty, both have been in contact with me. And I know both of them and Brad Jones have been in contact with um, Bob and the staff. Um, so they've been working very closely with us. Bob, as you had mentioned, the road diet is starting. Part of that project entails reviewing usage and traffic. And obviously, that is significantly less right now. Um, so as there are rolling that out, um, can we ask that the tracking not start until we are 
post state of emergency? Um, we can certainly ask Vanessa, you'll get more of a story next week. I've heard some conflicting stories. Uh, the one thing that's very clear is they are going to head with the project. Um, that some of the details of what that means and what they will study and what public participation they'll offer seem to change every few days. But by next week, we should have a really good picture. Um, they, they intended to try to start measuring by May or June this year. It's hard to know whether May or June would be uh, satisfactory, but it's unlikely to be you know, a full return back to full traffic. So they have to account for that somehow. Great, thank you. And just to clarify also, I know, uh, Bob, you, as, as well as all of us, were pretty shocked at uh, kind of how quickly things are moving ahead and, and that, in fact, signs went up in the last couple of days and there's work going on and there's now a, a plan to do things during the day. Um, the update next week will be great. Um, I know that Aaron and, and Julie and, um, sorry, Jean. Jean, thank you. Just sorry, just for a moment there. Um, are, are trying to find out what's going on and to get some participation. There was scheduled to be a meeting um, at Staples, an all-day meeting, and then obviously uh, with the distancing guidelines, um, they had to cancel that. And then right. um, so we haven't had that much chance for public input uh, into what's going on. It's just kind of coming down the road here a little bit quickly. I guess the the bright side, in some sense, is that. Um, the traffic won't be that heavy and, and won't be that disrupted um, while the construction is going on. But I know there are a lot of people that have comments and questions, and we just need to make sure we can find a way for them to, to get them addressed. Yeah, Mark, and, and my information is probably three or four days old, which is a long time right now. But as of three or four days ago, um, their website did not really contain the interactive ability for the residents to interact with them that they had hoped. So one of the really slick tools they advertised to us was a map where residents could put tom topics and comments and pin them to an area of town on a map to really help them and their engineers, uh, you know, with with discussion. So you'll have a full update on that next year, uh, next week. Um, hopefully, such a map is uh, up by then, and we could demonstrate it. So that's when you know the real time for public feedback would start. Certainly, there's not going to be any public meetings of any consequence for some time now, and. And you're right, they canceled that meeting right away when, this, when the governor ordered them to. Right. I know that there's a, a PowerPoint presentation that, that we saw today. Is that something we might be able to put up on the website if it's not already up? Yeah, I'll send the board an email with what's up already. There's a lot of stuff under the Economic Development tab, but I, I don't want to say what is and isn't. I don't know precisely. Got it. But I, I'll make sure that everything we have is up there. I think it probably is. Great. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, then let's roll on. Next item on the agenda uh, select board liaison assignments overview. And, and I don't know, Bob, if you want to add and, and board members from there. Um, so, in, in past years, and particularly the last few years, the board has established liaisons. And a lot of the expectation, I think, was that board members would uh, not only reach out to those, those other boards and committees, but to try to attend many meetings, maybe even as many as possible. And each board member took on quite a few different liaison assignments. Um, I think between liaisons and construction projects, it was 12, 14-ish, uh, that kind of range, very big numbers. And uh, when we had our retreat, which is now, it seems like about a year ago, but I don't think it was quite that far, we talked about the, the burden that created and not being able to really give the coverage that we had hoped to, and maybe there were some other options in terms of how we might do that. Uh, there were a couple of lessons learned from my perspective. Uh, one of them is that um, it is often easier to have one person as a liaison rather than two or more, because two or more uh, ends up into discussions of subcommittees and other activities, which makes it harder to, to do things. Um, and also thinking more about how we interact with those boards. So we had discussions that ranged from um, turning it into more of a two-way conversation. In other words, reaching out to chairs, vice chairs of the boards and committees, knowing who the right people are to talk to, allowing that they could uh, reach out whenever they wanted to. That was kind of one suggestion. Another suggestion would be to invite boards and committees to come into a select board meeting and make that part of our schedule, that they would be able to, to come in, perhaps it's once a year or more often if they need to or want to. 
uh, to let them come in that way. But really, it was to explore some new options. And instead of kind of taking on uh, the onus onto the select board members of trying to cover all of these meetings all the time, to find a way to, to really get to the core of things, make sure relationships exist, and turn it into something two-way. Why don't I stop at that and ask if, if there are other comments from, from folks who either uh, have some thoughts on it from last year or who don't and are just thinking about it now. Not everybody at once, please. I like the idea of, um, of select board members serving as a resource to various sports commissions and committees, but I, it was, it was quite burdensome to have an affirmative responsibility to attend as many meetings of the 14 boards, commissions, and committees to which I was assigned. It was, you know, it was not feasible. I could have been out every night of the week, and I was often out many, many nights a week, but um, I could be out every night and still not make all of the meetings because they conflicted with each other. So certainly, I wholeheartedly agree with moving away from that structure. Um, you know, I, I liked the email that Bob sent earlier today, which broke it down into a much more manageable framework than uh, I'd seen before, you know, where each of us take two, that seems, you know, if it's going to be a two-way street, if we each take two, that seems like a manageable caseload uh, in terms of, of liaison assignments. Uh, so I'd be comfortable in that sense, but be a, a two-way, even a two-way street with 14 separate assignments that's, that's still too much, even if we're not expected to go to all the meetings, but to, to, to develop, you know, that many different relationships with a constant conversation, I think is too many. So are you thinking, just kind of brainstorming through that for a moment, um, would we potentially look at Bob's list, set some priorities um, and make sure that those relationships are, are clearly established? and then offer the opportunity to other boards and committees to, to reach out whenever they want? That, that seems reasonable. Um, we could also, I, I'm just wondering, you know, who, I'm not sure who, who are we missing? You know, I guess we're missing quite a few of the, the original list. Um, so Bob, how did you, how did you select uh, which groups would would have uh, li are liaison assignments? Are those the boards, commissions, and committees that are busiest effectively? Oh, I think you're on mute, Bob. Um, I need to unmute you, Bob. Sorry, I tried and I can't sorry. do it. Sorry, there we go. There go. Yep. Um, sorry, it looked like it was a pared down list, which was the cycle. Um, there's a lot of boards and committees in, um, in public services, whether it's community services or community development. And I had suggested you probably need two select board members for that, or at least a primary and a backup for each. And then um, under Math's Department Administrative Services, there's, there's at least uh, a dozen boards, but they just don't meet that often. Mm -hmm. uh, with the possible exception of the, um, of the RMLD commissioners, FinCom school committee, certainly, and then maybe the, um, the bylaw committee. Um, but if you really take it, take a big step back and stop accepting individual assignments, it's the land use boards that are tricky because they meet so often and, and their workload is, is pretty high at times. Right. The, the other boards, um, I think you're right to be a resource to them and not need to go to their meetings and give an update all the time. Um, and just let them know you're there when, when they need you. And if there's anything that they're discussing that, you know, that should be a community interest, then, then you're there for them. Thanks, Bob. Vanessa, do you have a comment? I do. Bob, this is a great list. Thanks for breaking it down. I think, um, I think having been um, liaison to both CPDC and ZBA, those two boards tend to be, I think, amongst the most demanding from a time perspective. Um, I, it also, I feel like the, uh, which one is the most relevant to the board is something that fluctuates. 
No, um, having done recreation for two years, uh, it's there's a lot that happens there that affect a, that affects a big portion of the community, and I think for for me personally, it's been helpful to attend those meetings because you really see what's happening um, with recreation in town, um, and it makes you know me as a board member more informed when it comes to these issues that come before us. Um, I think bringing it down to Anne's point from 14 to something a little bit more manageable would be a great thing. Um, beyond that, I'm just sort of looking at the, the list off to the side. Um, you know, I, but I also want to be careful not to sort of slight some boards if we, if, if they don't make the cut, so to speak. What seemed to work well in the past is that um, you know perhaps there was one board member assigned to a certain board, Council on Aging. If they couldn't make it, they would just call around other board members and see who could make it. And that seemed to work pretty well over the years so that it wasn't a burden on one of you to always go with no other possibility of escape. Um, you know, and then two of you can speak between meetings and catch each other up. That's, that's not a problem. Carlo, did I see you had a, a comment? Yeah, I, I think uh, being new to this and, and having seen you, uh, the board members in the past, uh, you know, as Ann said, there's not enough days in the week, not enough nights in the week. But what about a quarterly presentation and we can stagger them for the maybe the smaller boards and committees these, just these for a quarterly sucks. update that way we're, all, way we're all up to speak at the same time. At the same time. And then the more important. The more important list that a lot of given to us um, you know, we should nail down as, as soon as possible. But I think uh, having a two-way street is very important, but having uh, quarterly updates and stagger them between the smaller boards and committees, unless something's urgent, uh, uh, that's something just an idea that I have. Excellent. Karen, did you have any comments? Well, sure, um, I, I do agree that the um, <clears throat> the importance of the board's involvement will probably fluctuate with the various committees. Um, I know when you served on finance committee um, for a number of years, we didn't always have our select board liaison there. They made periodic visits. And um, so, you know, I'm thinking I didn't see the permanent building committee on here now. You know, if, if we have a project underway, then that could be, become more important. Um, I think in general, the climate advisory committee is something that um, should be more important going forward. Going forward, I um, I having once been on town meeting and finance committee and on the library building committee, you know, absolutely trying to attend every meeting can completely get out of hand. So I'm fine substituting with other folks sometimes as needed. I, I'm not sure that we need to go to every single meeting for every single board. We can't. <laughs> yep. <laughs> One of the I do like the framing of, of the the function of a liaison is to be a resource to the to that board commission and committee, so they can kind of let us know what they need from us. Um, Bob, I I was wondering. I know you said this should be uh, your breakdown should include um, every board commission and committee within. The separate categories. Um, so, the, for example, the Reading Cultural Council. I was liaison to to that group. They they're under one of these functions. Yeah. If you click on the link that was attached, it shows yeah. the old format. And okay. you've you've mentioned a number of boards that I've just said is miscellaneous under administrative yeah. services. That okay. has climate advisory, cultural yeah. council, permanent building committee. Mm -hmm. And okay. you're all right that as things change, you may say, okay, this now is an important issue. We just need to dedicate one person to it. Uh, and the other, the other piece where I'm not sure that this list does cover uh, is our subcommittees, the ad hoc committee, and those do take up a fair amount of time as well. And those are real; those are affirmative responsibilities of the board versus acting as a resource to other boards, commissions, and committees. So I think it's probably good to keep those in the mix when we're thinking about how to um, 
how to hand out assignments so that no one person has too many or too few. Great. One other thing that we talked a little bit about uh, is that because the chair positions at all the committees are rotating, that there might be some value in finding a way to speak with the, the new uh, chair and vice chair of the different groups. And I'm wondering, now that we're all getting so good with Zoom and virtual meetings, <laughs> that maybe that's a good way to do that. Um, so it doesn't yeah. take um, all the boards and committees all getting together or reaching out to each one of them and going to each one of the meetings, but instead we could um, either record something or if we don't record it, we could uh, perhaps do a meeting and have a bunch of chairs um, available and give them the opportunity to, to listen for a little bit, but then ask questions. And just to make sure that they understand responsibilities, expectations, and have a, a way to, to get their questions answered. So maybe that's something we could consider also. Particularly in how do I convene my committee um, in, in a time of pandemic? And how do I, you know, when should I, when is it worth doing so? Um, and how do I conduct a meeting? You know, we've learned some things um, in, in, in getting to this point and we can certainly share what we've learned both in terms of how you still comply with um, the newly re relaxed provisions of the open meeting law when it comes to in-person meeting, uh, as well as what we've learned in terms of soliciting uh, and incorporating public comment. Great, any other thoughts we should add to the kitty here? Mark, I have a um, sort of tangential but related question, um, the VAS. Um, so the board policies say that you're supposed to, uh, you serve two years rotating on it. Um, I've done it for two years. Um, a former board member was on it with me. So technically this year, um, we should have um, two new people serving on the VASC. Um, because of the elections, we, I, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we have a vacancy uh, on FinCom too, perhaps. Ooh, I don't know. That's correct. Yeah, but so given everything that's happening from a financial perspective, it might be nice if, and I know that that one's a little bit different because that's um, a different appointment committee, but um, it'd be nice if we could give them a full um, collection of people. Yeah, Vanessa, can I ask you hang on to that thought for about five sure. minutes? Um, and we're, that's exactly what we're going to dig into is um, what we need and how we're going to do it <laughs> as it relates to uh, volunteer boards, because there's quite a list actually. And then on June 30th, whatever the turnover date is, there'll actually be more. So yeah, let, let's hang just for a second. We'll come back to that one. Um, anything else though on, on, on this? Because I think our, our mission should be, let's, let's kind of frame what we think makes sense. Um, and then let's kind of, let's get a plan for us to kind of decide who will who'll do what. So today was more the discussion, making sure we're, we're listening to different ideas and then trying to put something together that we can we can do for next week. Um, I should note also, so we assigned some liaisons, at least temporarily, um, just to make sure that we had continuity. So we did that for RMLD. Um, we did that for, so Vanessa doing that with Board of Health, it's Anne. Um, I think those are the only two we've done so far, um, at, at least as temporaries. Um, and I think that you know, there's been good, a good need to have the role, and I think it's worked well um, in both of those so far. And I think those are important. And maybe those are examples of at different times we're going to need to shift to some things. And Vanessa, your point on FinCom, clearly that's going to be um, a pretty important activity going forward also. So you know, maybe what we're going to have to do is assign, maybe this is an idea, we take 10 to start. I'm randomly picking that for a moment because it's two apiece and figure out kind of where the focus should be, make sure that we have priorities there with the understanding. And I think Bob's point was spot on. Um, we have a, we can come to other members of the board. If someone is gonna be able to make it and it's an important meeting, find a way to ask a question and say, hey, is there someone else that might be able to cover this for me? And make sure that for those at least highly relevant, highly topical items, we've got good coverage. Um, the idea of resource seems to resonate pretty well with everybody, making sure that we've reached out in a way that people know how, how do you reach the board? You know, what do you do? Um, who are the people that, um, that we should be thinking about? 
uh, ad hocs and subcommittees, and I, I think your point is there also, those um, have a, a large amount of responsibility that we've driven, so we've got to make sure that we're cognizant of those. Um, Carlo, on the idea of, of rotating um, updates, um, maybe maybe we could give the option to the boards and say, you know, here here is a time slot that would be available. Would you like to come in? Um, maybe you know, one one side says let's make it an obligation. The other side says let's uh, offer it to them as an opportunity, uh, and maybe somewhere in between is where it wins, something like that. Uh, and in the last piece to me that I've just in my notes here was that um, we really like this idea of two-way communication. So um, availing, making sure we're available to them as a resource, asking them to, to make contact um, as desired or, or needed or wanted. And I think that would help us cover things too, in particular, like how to work in, in emergencies and allowing them to kind of come forward. Is that a reasonable sense of the board? Did I miss anything or misstate anything? No? So why don't we do this? Um, so Bob, I'm going to come back to your list just for a second here. Let me see if I can bring it back up. Uh, let's see. So, so RMLD, we've talked about FinCom. We've talked about. We'll have to set that up. Schools is um, that turned into. I mean, there are a lot of meetings. They they parallel us in terms of of meetings and sometimes with length as well. So we want to kind of figure out how to get some reasonable coverage on that. Uh, let's see, admin services, community services. So Council on Aging, um, Board of Health, Recreation, I think are all ones there. Would it make sense still for each of us to uh, kind of make a little bit of a list of, of three? And uh, maybe what we do is attempt to have each of us take, you know, at two as a target that kind of are our main topical responsibilities and then talk through these other parts in terms of how do we want to have updates from these groups. Uh, the training idea, I still think is pretty important. Just quick aside for a minute, did Carlo or Karen, did you guys get the onboarding manual that Andy worked so hard to put together? Yes, I got that. Oh, and great. that. Carlo, did you get it as well? Carlo, I think you may be frozen. Hmm. Oh, Carlo, we're not hearing you at all if you're there. Uh, he's frozen. Okay, he'll be back. <laughs> uh, okay, let me just make sure I let him in when he tries to come in. Great. Okay. Um, does that work for everyone as a, as a structure? So come in to the next meeting uh, armed with kind of three things. We'll, we'll decide at least two priorities uh, for each person. We'll talk about establishing how we'd like the, the groups to interact with us. Make sure it's clear that we're a resource uh, to them. You know, whenever they need it. Um, and probably that means that we need to tell them. So if you do have a question, here's what you do. So we need to have an answer to that. So it, it could be an email to the group. Um, still create that longer list, just with the understanding that there are two groups that we're working with very closely and the others are more on an as needed basis. Is That's good. Covered? Yes, and let's lest we forget about the subcommittees. I'm I'm looking at last year's subcommittees, some of which I think have have sunset. Um, so those, Bob, when you send, perhaps you could send the list around again and include the subcommittees that are still in existence, and and folks could um, indicate their preference for those as well. Which um, subcommittees does the board? Think it is in existence. If you look at the link I sent, there's a full yep. list. I can just read right. them. Um, right. Communication is clearly still outstanding. Yes. Capital projects still outstanding, and that that included Oakland Road. Should we should keep that one? I think yes. Then I'm sure um, we didn't dissolve it, right? RMLD payments. I think you just cut that down to one person, one member. So there's not a yeah, subcommittee. Yeah, we sunsetted. We we sunsetted the that yep. subcommittee. And I'm not sure. Um, new EDC I know was discussed, but I'm not sure what the status is. And then housing trust. I think the board just put off and prioritized lower. I think yep. new EDC is was still. I think my recollection of where things 
were left off from the board's perspective was we asked um, Mark and Andy to uh, go back and work with staff. <laughs> so I don't know, Mark, from your perspective, um, if that is, I assume the new EDC subcommittee is still um, alive in, in, in some fashion. We, we never sunsetted it. And um, would you like, I assume you'd like to see that continue. Yeah, I think it, it, it didn't stop. I think it should continue. I think that um, there are a couple of clear things that, that need to change. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. One was just the initial feedback that the board gave, but perhaps more importantly, the, um, the needs maybe have changed a little bit also in terms of where focus yeah. needs to be and how things yeah. need to happen. And I think that probably is worth a discussion with staff um, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. a next step. And, and just as a reminder, um, the board had asked to try to minimize two person assignments. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Think of the logic of oh, trying true. to post meetings and do all that. Yeah. True. There could be a new economic development committee thought leader right. <laughs> exactly. rather than subcommittee. Right. <laughs> well, well, speaking from experience, just the um, having two people and, and, and subcommittees. Um, just made it a lot harder to move things ahead. It really did, my observation. True, so we actually could, we could consider having thought leaders in lieu of subcommittees. Um, that yeah, sorry. Was, it's probably a better, a better term. <laughs> sorry, I'm just texting Carlo. I'm gonna ask him if he can call in um, if he's having a problem with the, with the link. Yeah, and I agree, you know, we, I, I think communications we should keep because it's it's active right now. Um, but I think for something like capital projects, housing, EDC, you know, maybe we re revisit those so that we have a thought leader um, and they can move it forward with periodic updates to the broader board, get feedback and go back to work. Um, I found the subcommittees unwieldy. It was it was tough to find a time to meet and post. Um, and to Mark's point, just move things forward. I agree. And the, more to come on this in, in a future agenda item. But Vanessa and I will be meeting tomorrow on the communication subcommittee. But I almost think that that subcommittee we could divide into two. Um, two spheres and one of us could take each piece and we could disband the subcommittee and be thought leaders in you know social media versus communications with email communications with the public or something along those lines we, we wouldn't necessarily have to have to have the work continue in the form of a subcommittee that has to you know schedule times and post and i think we may be able to move um that work forward outside the context of a subcommittee as well this is much I faster yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Karen. Reasonable. Okay, Carlos coming back right now. Let's make sure you come in. Carlo, are you able to hear us? Uh, not yet. Let's give him one more minute. <clears throat> so before I close the topic, I'd love to get his feedback. Carlo, can you, there we go. Great, Carlo, can you hear us now? Picture, no sound. Yeah. Um, so it hasn't come yet. Carlo, we don't have sound from you yet. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. there you go. Great, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yep, yeah, things aren't quite, aren't quite hundred <laughs> percent. Welcome back. <laughs> It just died on me. I don't know what happened. I went to hit the unmute button. It just died. Oh, it wasn't me. Trust me. <laughs> no, I, what was I going to say? What were we talking about? <laughs> so, yeah. So I wanted to come back. So um, we came back to just following on the discussion of how we, we'd like to do liaisons, but we also talked about subcommittees. And uh, I think three of us commented that when we had subcommittees, you had two people involved, it required calling meetings regularly and it impeded progress. Um, getting to a meeting happened instead of making progress in a lot of cases. And maybe we could create a thought leader 
a single individual on, on many of the topics we're talking about to become the thought leader, to kind of take work forward and then present to the board uh, for feedback. And then eventually, if it turns into a motion for, for an activity, we do it that way. Um, and that sounded fairly reasonable. I don't know, do, do you have any thoughts on that? Is it something that the five of us or the four of us, whoever is at the meeting for that night and we want to form a subcommittee that is it just too demanding that and too time consuming? If, if one of us is going to be a thought leader, why can't five of us be thought leaders? Because as soon as more than one of us decides to be a thought leader on the same topic, <laughs> you need to make it a public meeting and call a meeting. No, no, not separately. I mean, at the meeting, during the meeting. Oh, d oh during the meeting. Absolutely. One person can kind of share uh, the feedback and then it's a discussion of, for all of us. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It, the, the issue is how does, how, does inf how does work get done in the background and then come back to the board for discussion? And using two people in subcommittees, uh, I, I think uh, Vanessa, Ann, and I all shared that getting the logistics set took a lot of time and it impeded progress, right? You spent no, no I, know, I know it's cumbersome. I know I, I agree with that aspect. Okay. All right. Okay. So we, so we could try that. And then the other comment that came up was on communications, because we were looking at each group to see if it might be possible or reasonable to have a thought leader. Communications came up, and then um, the discussion was that perhaps we can break that into two pieces. So one is more social media oriented, uh, and the other more, I guess, general communications, and then just have one person focus on that and then bring back some recommendations to the board for further discussion. I remember from last week that Vanessa was working on that. And then are we going to just, which I haven't seen any of because, you know, I'm, I'm new, but are we going to just continue that? We're not starting from scratch, obviously. Vanessa, I'm sure, has done a lot of work. Right, right, right. No, no starting from scratch. <laughs> No, so Carlo, good question. Um, so Ann and I are meeting tomorrow at eight. Um, we've set up a Zoom call um, to go over some suggestions for how we can move a select board Facebook page forward so that the community can hear from us as a board. Um, but then after that is completed, there's two sides that Ann and I, as part of the subcommittee, had discussed. One side of it was um, broad communications with residents, with the town manager. And then the other side of it was social media. So we can, once we do take this step um, officially as a subcommittee tomorrow, then we can revisit if we want to split up the parts that make up the subcommittee. So you'll be and hearing more from us next week if that makes it onto the agenda. Okay, okay. I just, yeah, I just want to get caught up to speed and be on the same page with everyone because I, I don't know if Cameron's behind, but I know I'm behind on. And the idea with using the it seems to be what we're using for the moment. We can revisit that that uh, that name, but the idea of using that versus a subcommittee um, doesn't mean that the thought leader would be the decision maker. Just that the thought leader would be tasked with coming back to the board with a proposal for the full board's discussion. Yeah, no, that that that, that makes sense. Uh, one other question, Carlo, I think um, you, you missed this one also. I was asking if you had received a copy of the select board onboarding manual. It wasn't completed, but I, I, I did have been reviewing it. Yes, I have. Okay, uh, great. I, I just wanted to make sure you manual, got it. I have, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And great. The one that Andy and Dan were working on. Exactly. Right. Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to make sure that that happened before we start talking about training other new members and things like that. I wanted to make sure that we had we had given the resources that we already had internally here. Okay. Cool. Did we okay. Get to the VASC yet? Or not no, next? no, no. We just I wanted you to come back in before we close this topic, and then we'll go to the VASC okay. next. Yeah, okay, I have to admit I don't know what the VASC is. Uh, I, give me one second. We'll get there. Oh, okay. <laughs> like the only one. <laughs> no, 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 no. So. Okay. Um, so if it's all right with the board, I think we, we've got some pretty good ideas. What I asked um, is that each of us come back to the next meeting, indicate um, three, um, I guess, priorities, if you will, in terms of areas where you think um, 
you'd be willing to, to dig in. The goal will be we'll find two for each person um, of items uh, or committees right now that are very topical. Um, there's activity going on. It would be worth kind of taking a more proactive stance with those groups. And then in addition, we'll come back, we'll look at the other groups and make sure that we've decided how to offer ourselves as a resource. So if, if another committee comes and said, oh, gee, I do have a question of the select board, they should know who to talk to. And, and there'd be one person kind of assigned for each group to get that started. So, Carla, did you freeze again? Oh, you're back. Yeah, I'm good now, I'm good now. I don't know what's going on. You got it. Um, okay, so let's close on that topic. We'll bring it back next week and, and uh, kind of formalize which ones we'll, we'll do each. Okay, so next topic. Um, is volunteer boards. Let me just bring up the piece on the agenda so I have it accurately here. Um, so the appointment process to volunteer boards um, is, is kind of the, the item that we're talking about here. Um, so typically what would happen is that there, there, there is a group of two select board members that become part of a group called the, the VASC, which is the volunteer there wasn't appointment a sound that went up. committee. Sorry, volunteer, volunteer and subcommittee. Appoint appointment <laughs> subcommittee. Thank you. Um, and traditionally, this group has um, taken responsibility for um, collecting folks that say they would have an interest in participating in a board, conducting interviews, um, selecting the people to take those roles, and then bringing those, I guess, their recommendations to the board, the full board, for the board's approval. Um, and then off times um, at the June 30th end of the fiscal year um, is when many of those vacancies um, or changeovers will take place. But in addition, there can be changes during the course of the year. Just an example, um, the finance committee has, is down two people currently um, because they've taken on elected office. Um, and I believe the end of June is actually gonna be another opening uh, that takes place there. And so we need to talk about a process that we think would make sense um, now, where we're in the state of emergency that still allows us to attract people to want to participate with these committees, allows them to apply to be on these committees, allows us to interview the candidates for the committees, and essentially do the whole thing virtually, I guess is really what it comes down to. Um, there are, sorry, what, Caitlin, was it seven uh, full, full positions and 20 some odd associates that are open right now? Mm, sounds about right. Yeah, I think that's what it is right now. And I suspect in, into June, there'll be a few more. Uh, um, yeah, so I looked at that list briefly today. Um, so all the terms ending June 30th is actually about 100. So I know last year, Vanessa and Andy, I think they had about 80-ish. I think that was the number last year that they interviewed um, or most. Um, but the number this year looks about 100. Um, okay, so um, <laughs> I think the, so. The goal here was to have a discussion about um, how do we want to, to to Laura. I, I want to get some feedback from her just to make sure it would be acceptable to do uh, to have forms come in online if that's an acceptable way of doing it. Um, I guess the issue may come down to once they're appointed, <laughs> they need to be sworn in. How do we do that? Is there an opportunity to do that virtually? Uh, I don't know where that stands. We'll need to get some specific answers to that, I guess. Um, again, we're, this isn't unique to us. I think everybody has to deal with it. So um, I would hope there's a way to get it done. I would think our challenges are number one, to get the message out that there are all these openings and, and kind of share with people what they are um, and then get them to have an online application they can fill out and return um, and then we'll have to process them and, and set up virtual interviews and, and, and work that way. Um, I'm not daunted by the virtual interview part other than until you said it was like 100. <laughs> um, but I think there's some really critical ones that have to get filled you know, pretty much as soon as we can. FinCom probably being a great example of that one. Uh, and I'm sure there, there are plenty of other examples out there. The members have some thoughts on um, what we ought to do, prioritizing. Does this sound like a reasonable approach? What, Karen, you, you unbuzzed first, go ahead. Um, I was just wondering, um, are you uh, indicating that we should get started on this earlier um, or right away? 
or I think typically I was under the impression that the appointments would be done at the beginning of the fiscal year. So we have some openings right now uh, that are critical. So, um, and I was also surprised that the number of openings is, is you know, somewhat substantial. I think there's seven full spots and in, in, you know, roughly in 20 some odd associates. Uh, and for some of those, I think it probably would make sense. Also, in order to get candidates, I think we need to let people know sooner than later that we're looking for people uh, to volunteer for, for a number of different areas. And here's the process. Um, and then uh, just to, to come to Vanessa's point for a minute, and then we'll come back to it, we need to, um, we need to get members for the VASC. <laughs> so uh, the traditional path doesn't work here because the one member from last year already did two years. So we need to figure out how to, you know, assess who's going to be on the VASC. Jason, was that, Vanessa, you know, was that done? Did the full board vote on members for the VASC? Is that how that was done? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mark, so, would it be helpful to, to, um, to let the board, more for um, the new board members to let them know what the VASC looked like in the last couple of years? Please, would you mind doing that? Sure, sure. Uh, so a um, couple of years ago, the VASC, uh, the board um, changed how we handled the VASC and decided to interview anyone renewing their, their appointment. Prior to that, um, it had done, been done automatically. If someone wanted to keep their position, we just said, great, and, and renewed them. Um, but when we changed two years ago, it's um, a heavy process that starts in May and goes to June, um, interviewing those 80, now 100 people. But it's actually a really nice opportunity to get to know people that you may not otherwise have an opportunity to meet. And you hear about what is of interest to them, what their struggles are, what their needs are, what their priorities are. And so it's a really great connection point between all the BCCs and the two members of the VASC. So I really enjoyed serving on the VASC. Um, so I, I like that idea. It's We can revisit that given the complexities that we're facing this year. Um, hopefully they're less of an issue in June. Um, so that is an option to bring it down from 100 to you know, maybe a couple dozen. Uh, and those interviews were about 10 or 15 minutes each person. Um, and then the rest of the year, it was as vacancies occurred, like we're dealing with right now with FinCom, although FinCom, as you know, Mark, is a little bit different um, in that it, it only needs the chair of the select board, the chair of the finance committee, and the town moderator. So, a little less pressure on us to decide who serves on VASC, but um, for other vacancies, um, we would just interview as they came up and then make their recommendation and then add them to the count to the agenda. With there being 100 vacancies, there are potentially many more interviews than than 100 if more than one pe person ap applies for a vacancy. Correct, or, or is it that people are applying because they want to serve on a board, commission, or committee? So when a number of vacancies. Um, so, I um, the the hundred that that Caitlin mentioned, those are usually return people, um, mm -hmm. and the vacancies are on top of that. But there are some committees that have numerous associate positions that are rarely filled. Okay. Uh, so you don't actually have to interview, you know, if you have 20 associate positions, there may not necessarily be applicants for them. We hope there are. We'll encourage people to apply. <laughs> exactly. It's also the case that um, not every slot is necessarily filled on every single board and committee. Sometimes there mm -hmm. remain some openings. Um, depending on, on the group, depending on the timing, depending on volunteers and what they want to do. Um, but mm -hmm. still a very substantial number that, that we would be going through. I think that's clear. Bob, did you have a comment? Yeah, I think, um, I think it's important you start this discussion early this year because in addition to the terms expiring, you don't know what people who have terms that run further may have a change in life circumstance. Um, so I think you need to get out to the volunteer community more broadly. I also think this year you might try, um, Zoom meetings seem to be good for this, and you might try instead of tailoring to when someone's available, 
just say the uh, ZBA uh, appointment list is this time. And if three of you are interested, that's when you have to come. You know, if you set it up a month or so in advance, that probably works better. The chances of someone being available to a Zoom meeting are probably better than coming into town hall, for instance. Mm -hmm. So it, it would really cut down on the logistics if you could fill vacancies by interviewing all the candidates at once. It, it'll never happen perfectly, but if you could aim for that, I think it might help the process. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. Um, so there, there are a couple of pieces we need to act on. One is to just kind of figure out kind of what we want to do, how and when. And then the second piece is to talk about um, figuring out who should be on VASC. I guess those are the two things. I, I would suggest that, um, to Bob's point, we should get on this instantly um, and kind of start, um, once we have a system in place and, and, a, and a plan for doing it, start advertising and allow people to fill out the forms, indicate what, what boards or committees they'd like to participate in. Um, and that process can be happening you know, all by itself on the side. Uh, then we can make our decisions on VASC and we can uh, have a format. I think Zoom is a, is a great way to do it, just to, to get things going. Um, you know, if anything, we probably need more people to help out on things right now as opposed to less. And, and once we are past COVID-19, I think things will, will kind of, you know, just whoosh and, and we're gonna be wanting to have as much coverage as we possibly can. Any other thoughts is around that? Goal, excuse me, is the goal, Mark, to see who is interested tonight and then uh, choose two next week? Is that so what you like? We actually, the, uh, the agenda for next week is I think already done because of the short week. Is that, am I correct? No, not yet? It has it ready tomorrow. to go. Okay, so it's about, it's just about to go. So does that mean we can still make a change to it? Uh, you can, okay. and you have a broad topic of vote on select board liaison assignments, which do include VASC. Oh, great, okay. So I think, yes, Carlo, I think that's probably a really good idea. Um, I was gonna separate it kind of two, two paths here. One is, Let's talk in general about um, the need to get volunteers engaged um, and to make sure we have a process that can work, that, that uh, we can, in fact, get forms handled online. They can be re received online. We can do Zoom interviews and swearings in could take place conceivably. Uh, I don't want to say how yet, but other than in person to see if that's a possibility. Um, and I'm going to assume for the moment that it is because it makes more sense than getting people together. So uh, why don't we see if we can get that going? Because that, that's kind of piece one. And then piece two, I guess, is that we, we talk about um, the VASC and um, set that for our agenda for next week in terms of taking a vote of who should, who should be there. Yeah, I agree, because to your point earlier was that we need to you know, address FinCom and the more urgent vacancies, the actual vacancies, sooner than later. So the sooner we appoint the VASC, and sooner we advertise for the two current FinCon meetings and the other one coming and the other boards, uh, the, be the, the more time we'll have into, you know, if we get lucky enough, we get into May, um, we may be in a better spot. Yeah. To uh, just to, uh, Vanessa had, had corrected me on this before. So actually with FinCom, it's not the VASC that does right, the right. Sorry, not yeah. FinCom, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Other. But for the others, absolutely, that's the case. Sorry, yes. I wonder if it makes sense to find out who might be interested because that, the process, you know, it, it would be nice to devise a process that's going to work for the individuals who are willing to take on this task. You know, there's a big difference between being asked to do, conduct a hundred plus interviews versus a couple dozen interviews. So you're thinking just structurally in terms of new applicants versus returning? Mm -hmm. What's, what does the board think about that? So in other words, um, if we looked only at new applicants, the list is substantially below 100. If we attempt to review everyone at the end of June, then it's 100 plus. And that may be daunting. It is daunting. <laughs> I'm just frankly, I don't have the time to do that, <laughs> but it, I, so that's, part, but I was wondering if, if it might make sense to find out who's interested in this, because if there are folks who 
do have the time and are interested, you know, it's perhaps the better process to allow for the review of a couple hundred individuals, but um, I don't know if anyone has the time to do that. I would not speak, but the sooner we start, I think, uh, do, do we have to wait till June 30th? Does to do the interviews? No, so we, uh, ignoring the FinCom uh, openings for a moment, I think there are still 30 or so openings, but probably what we'd want to do is um, understand what the June 30th situation is going to be so that we don't have to do it twice. Maybe there are some we can start sooner, but I, I think we need to have the whole picture. Caitlin, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, there is one thing I do need to do before you start the interviews. Um, we send out a letter to all the incumbents whose terms are ending June 30th, and we ask them to indicate if they want to continue serving or if they want to just end their term and move on. Um, so we send, we, I can send them out fairly soon, um, but we usually send those out and wait for them to come back. So then you get an idea of how many people want to continue and how many don't as well. Cause then that, um, then we can post the vacancies. I can post the vacancies actually at the same time I do the letters, but um, that's like a hundred letters I have to send out before. Hmm. So this gets back as a, as a timing game. Are we better off doing it you know, soon in the month of April or are we better off waiting until the month of May? I think you should send the letters out next week. Sorry, yeah. Caitlin. <laughs> yeah, so okay. I, I was just Morning. about to suggest that. So, my, sorry, Caitlin. Um, the week we're able to interview between five and eight people a night. Uh, and we met weekly um, at a minimum, sometimes occasionally twice a week for about six weeks. I have a question. If I send the letters out next week, um, when do you want me to have them returned by? Give them two weeks. Yeah, I'd give them two weeks to the end of the month. Okay. Perfect. The board's can really going to need by the months of May and June. Yeah, um, we can send a majority of them out via email and ask for them to respond that way as well. So maybe it'll be a lot quicker. Um, okay. There yeah, may be idea. a few that we have to send out um, hard copies for people, but I think a majority do have emails, yeah. Yeah. Great. So uh, following up on, on Anne's, Anne's point in terms of who who will make time and, and, and has interest, um, I will make time and have interest as, as an option. Okay. I, I volunteer as tribute as well. So are you volunteering me, Carla, or are you? I missed that. I'm volunteering for District 5, Precinct 5. <laughs> Karen? Um, I would, um, I, I think that 100 number is very intimidating. Um, and so does meeting multiple times a week for six weeks is intimidating. Um, I, I would <clears throat> do prioritize the unfilled seats first. Um, I do in past has the VASC um, reached out to the chairs if they weren't the ones being renewed and sort of just connected with them or how does that work? Vanessa? Um, we did try for some, especially if there was multiple applicants for a single position, um, but that uh, is also daunting. Uh, there is we could do something a little more creative this year if we want to do the interviews with the hundred people who are renewing we could have four members of the board each take so two do one group of 50 and two do another group of 50 and perhaps have them bucket them so that everyone who's applying to zba goes with one pair of board members and so it it lessens the load mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think for renewals, it still that, has that touch point. Yeah, I think for renewals, I think that makes uh, good sense, and we can kind of share the load that way, and everyone can can participate with that. Um, but I would suggest, I think, for the the uh, new people uh, and folks that will be either timing out or not coming back, um, 
that probably we want to have a committee. See, let's see how many people we have first, but it, it may be better to have a committee of two work through that and just so it stays consistent. I agree. I might, Mark. That um, makes sense. Just to remind uh, board members and new members, especially um, the VASC, if it's two people, it has to be a posted public meeting. Um, you are not going to get RCTV to probably cover all those meetings, so there won't be much ability for public participation that way. Um, there typically is not a lot of public participation, but you should think about that. If just one board member each divided up incumbents, you wouldn't have that issue in terms of a public meeting. You know, good, bad, or indifferent, at least it wouldn't be a technical issue. While it might change in the time of Zoom meetings, um, we have never, in, in my two years, we never had a, uh, a resident attend the VASC interviews, for what it's worth. Well, that's interesting, because I, I used to see them. That is interesting. I had one person attend once. But anyway, um, so I think those are great ideas. So it, it sounds like our feeling is that um, in terms of the incumbents, um, First of all, let's get a list of those that are planning to renew. So we'll start with sending out the letters by email, wherever possible, ASAP. I'll give them a target date two weeks forward from whenever they go out or, or end of month, whatever I guess is the is the better date to use. Um, let's see what that gives us as a, as a pool for incumbents. Then let's talk about advertising to get more volunteers engaged, because I think that's our biggest need in general is to um, invite people to come in. Um, my experience is that sometimes it's helpful to know roughly what vacancies you have. Um, some people want to know that. Other people are, are just, you know, they're, hey, I want to get more involved in town. How do I do that? And, and we just need to guide them into that. But I think if we start advertising for it tomorrow, that's not too soon. Um, and um, I will, if, if, you, if the board wants, I would be happy to talk with Laura. I already kind of sent her a, a question about this in advance of tonight's meeting, just saying, hey, what do we need to do to be able to have an online system of doing this? Um, and then I can report back to um, our next meeting as part of, I guess, can we call that a liaison assignment? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Is I just that okay asked her a question online about uh, how do we swear people in and have social distancing? So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I copied town council just because that's probably something that's fallen through the cracks. Yeah. And, and, and again, I, this is something that every municipality should be facing. So I'm, I'm hoping we can, we can get yeah, it. Not every municipality has swearing in. Really? Uh, especially at town meeting. You remember how Alan has kind of dropped that? Well, the, 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 there's been the, the group, but. <laughs> um, okay, so let's take it forward. Is that okay? We'll take it forward that way. And then everyone can think on um, the vast piece and um, so actually, if we can add that now to the agenda for next week uh, to, uh, I guess, finalize on VASC and process, that would be great. Uh, so let's add that to the agenda. I just wanted to say I'm happy to do my part and share the load. I just would of, of 100 interviews at the Yeah, it's, it's only, you know, probably 10 hours a week for six weeks. Probably is not so bad. Okay. <laughs> Any other discussion on this? Are we ready to close on this topic? Uh, good. Okay. So the next item we had was um, select board communication policy. Vanessa, you, you, I know you mentioned there's going to be a meeting tomorrow. Um, is there any update that you guys want to share tonight first? Um, no. So um, Ann and I will be meeting tomorrow to go over um, a potential Facebook page for the select board and how we could move that forward in a timely fashion. Um, beyond that, we have no other update, unless, Anne, you'd like to add something. I uh, just said it, it's posted with a, a Zoom call-in number and that we plan to take public comment in the same fashion that the select board is where folks can email us um, during the meeting and we will respond as we can. And we would ask them to, to uh, indicate their name and an address. Uh, you're welcome to email for folks listening, and you're welcome to email the full board through the town um, 
the town website if that's easiest for you. Um, but if you'd like to email me directly, that's ann.landry at ci.reading.ma.us. Um, that, and that is also fine and I can raise, um, and that's Ann with an E, ann.landry uh, at ci.reading.ma.us. And I can raise emails received um, during my call with Vanessa. Great. Um, how should we list this for our next meeting? So should we put on a topic uh, update on communications plan? Um, and should there be a discussion of voting to disband? Or should we just say communications subcommittee update and vote? Why don't we take it as an update? And Ann and I can discuss as part of our meeting tomorrow the, uh, how, how we could move forward or disband it. You could just write, if you wanted to put, um, you could just put, um, uh, you know, sub subcommittee, and then we could um, handle it however makes sense based on our meeting. Okay, so the communication subcommittee. Sub, subcommittee, sub, sub, yeah, that, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, great. So Caitlin, can I ask you to add that one as well, please? Another item. Sorry, Kate, Karen, go ahead. Oh, did I see your hand go up? I thought I did. No, no, sorry. Okay, misread. <laughs> um, okay, so what we haven't done is looked at any communication that came in during the meeting. And I suggest that we do that and, and um, include the name and address of the person who sent in the communication. Um, so just thinking for the board for a moment. So we have three groups of communication. One is people who already wrote to the board and their, their uh, comments were published in the packet, meaning it came in before we posted. Second group would be people who sent messages since that time. And I guess the third group, which might be related to the second are folks who in the course of this meeting actually sent in uh, communication to the board. So my suggestion would be for, for discussion, the first group, they're already in the packet. Um, I would kind of let those, they're there, they're published as they are. I think the second and third groups are the ones that we'd want to talk about here. Does that make sense to the, to the rest of the members? So in other words, things that have happened since the packet was published. Right. And the one, in terms of public comment, we can't weigh in on a comment received if it's not something that was posted on the agenda. Is that that correct because that would be in violation of open meeting law, but to the extent it was something that was already on the agenda or included in the packet and it, we can we can respond. Correct, so I think uh, technically if it's published in the packet, it's part of the agenda. And if it right. was not, uh, so it's anything after that point in time, then uh, you're right that we can't comment on it unless it was already part of our agenda. Right. So we should set expectations for folks that, um, Many of these may relate to uh, items we'll have to talk about in the future, but we're um, having it read publicly now. And all of the emails that come into the board um, do become part of the public record and do get published in a packet. It just goes to the next packet that's, that's possible. Okay. So how do we read them? How should we do that? Should we... Um, should we rotate through the board, have people read uh, the name, address, and comments? Should we ask the secretary to, to take that on? Is there, does the board have a preference on how to do this? So we're, this is new territory. Mark, <laughs> I have a question. Sure. So um, have we received, so last time um, we flagged emails that came in during the meeting. Have we received any, now we got some from the press, um, but have we received any from residents in the past two hours? Um, I've not looked. Can I can I ask that we take a look? Um, no. I'm saying no. Just two from the media. And uh, that's what I see. Yeah, just two from Bob Holmes. So are those the ones that you want to tackle as opposed to emails that came before? Because the any emails we've gotten from between when the packet was posted and tonight will go in the next packet, right? Right, right. And, and I think the other thing we should consider is that we're now gonna be meeting weekly, um, not every two weeks or, or less regularly. We're, we're gonna be getting together on a weekly basis. 
month. So um, my opinion is that we'd like to encourage people to send in their comments kind of as they have them. So literally in many cases before the meeting comes up, and we appreciate also that as if, if you had come to the meeting and were sitting in the meeting and had some comments, you might bring them up. So those would be, we'd handle those from when the meeting started to, to kind of where we are, the point of public comment. So, so I'm gonna take a step back. Does the board wanna focus on those that have come in during the meeting only and all the others will go into the packet for next week or do we wanna do something different? That seems to make sense to me because it's always what we've done historically and we've always tried to be open to the public while we're actually in meetings because obviously questions come up as we have discussions. So I, I would definitely want to address questions from the public that come up as we're talking about things live. Um, Other members? I think it's hard. I don't disagree with that. You're right. When, when we open a meeting and have public comment and people there in person, um, when they can address what, whether it's on the agenda or not on the agenda, and we can advise them, hey, it's not on the agenda, and we'll get back to you. But I think with the Board of Health updates and everything that was updated last week was very beneficial from the packet to tonight prior to 7 p.m., most of the correspondence was gatherings um, on, of, of young people and just you know the social distancing stuff. Um, some emails about the recall, um, but mostly the board of health, uh, not board of health issues, but mostly the the social gatherings at the parks and the fields uh, that have come to the entire board. Um, I know Bob Holmes. I don't know if you want to address those because those came live because he would be at the meeting typically or someone you know from the media would be at the meeting to report on our meetings he had as you as you've seen he has a specific question about the unfortunate death and the uh, request about if we want to address the board of registrars meeting uh today uh, that happened this afternoon so those are the two that are from bob uh all the in between were Yep. Comments that were not on the agenda, per se. Karen, Ann, are you comfortable with what Carlo had kind of proposed here and Vanessa mentioned as well? So we we'd address, it seems we can try and answer the, the couple from Bob here to the extent that we're going to be able to answer them. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm just looking at, at what we had put in our, at the beginning of the agenda and pack in terms of what the public's expectations might be. So it says for public participation, please email and include your full name and address. Comments and questions will be monitored during the meeting. So that does suggest that it, it, it does seem to suggest that during the meeting um, monitoring and opportunity for comments. So I'm okay with that. Karen? Um, I had a question about some of the emails um, on various topics when they come in without a specific address. How would we deal with them? I, I don't know if any of them, I, none of them came in live tonight. I think last week we did get a couple that were um, not completely. Um, so I defer to you all. Um, I'm new at this, so if my thank you for clarifying that it was not. We're new to this too. <laughs> Territory. <laughs> hasn't kicked any of us off yet. Good job. <laughs> so if we can't come on it, we can't come on it. Thank you for reminding us. And I, if everything that we can do to make it as if it were a real meeting, as as you would mm -hmm. normally do, that that makes sense to me. So it, 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 I'm, I'm hearing pretty much we're all in agreement um, that. Uh, a couple things. Number one, we do want to encourage people to send us emails at any time with topics that they, they would like to address. That's number one. Number two, for the purpose of our meetings, um, to please, uh, if they're going to send us something during the meeting, please be sure to indicate their full name and address um, as part of that email um, and that we will attempt to read them uh, with name and address and comments um, at a, a section, a public comment section, which usually we have at the beginning of the meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's, I think that's fine. I think that's appropriate. And we can start doing that, you know, as early as next week, um, literally. Um, 
so if, if that works for everybody, we can, you know, we can take a look at, at, uh, at, at Bob's comment, Bob Holmes comment. Um, so, uh, so why don't we just uh, read this one? Is that acceptable to read this one out loud? All right. So this is from, from Bob Holmes, uh, Gleason Road. And he's got actually two questions. One, I assume you're all aware of the Board of Registrar's meeting today. They're waiting for your guidance on when to hold a public hearing. Will guidance come tonight? So the answer to that is no, it was not on the agenda. Um, however, uh, it isn't on the proposed agenda for next week. And I think um, I actually uh, watched the Board of Registrar's meeting and I think that that's what Ray indicated would, would happen as well, is that it would not be addressed tonight because it's not on the agenda. Uh, Bob's second question, um, understanding privacy concerns, might there be more information available about the uh, individual who unfortunately passed away um, or not? Um, I, Bob, I, I put that to you, but I'd imagine that privacy would restrict that, but I won't answer for you. When I wrote my uh, memo, I didn't know. I know a little more now. I just don't think it's appropriate to comment. It's really up to the family to allow that. Okay. Um, I think that Kevin Bent snuck one in just now. Am I seeing that? Yeah. <laughs> so this is from uh, Kevin Bent, Reading Post. Dear Select Board, are any additional steps going to be taken to curtail public gatherings in public parks? Bob, do you want to address that one? Uh, if he has any suggestions, I'd be interested. <laughs> so to be clear, the uh, basketball hoops were zip tied, correct? Correct. Um, and we are trying to uh, speak to residents and ask them to not allow for, for gatherings like that and, and, uh, and group sports. We're pleading with people to please respect that um, and not require that public safety or public works or anybody else have to, have to go down to, to break these things up. It, it's in all of our interest to do that. Right. I'm, if I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, but public parks are still open but athletic complexes are closed yeah i was i wasn't sure if kevin was making a distinction on that um so things like the town forest are still open um it's recreation fields you know softball fields basketball tennis that are closed so the common is open you know right we just asked that it's it's small groups um, yes one thing I noted just anecdotally, um, a lot of people, I don't know where they're residents of, but I'm sure some of them can be from Reading, um, end up walking the lake in, in Wakefield. And my observation is that they are not observing social distancing at all. So I, I, have, an up, I have an update on that. As of uh, either yesterday or this morning, it was closed to the public in terms of all the parking lots. There's no, to I drove around today, there is no, no place to park right. anywhere. Everything is roped off. So they, yeah. they tried everything they could to discourage that and finally had no other choice. And also, Mark, the chair um, of the select board there actually did a PSA on Facebook, which I thought was pretty clever. <laughs> to try to not discourage, but he, I mean, he made a good point. I didn't get to it today. He said there are 88 miles of roads in Wakefield, uh, please go explore them. I mean, we, we as a family try to walk and I love the lake. I used to live in Wakefield. Um, I have not been to the lake yet for that simple reason. And now that I've taken even more steps with the parking and putting cones out, I think that will discourage a lot of people. Um, but uh, you know, we walked a few different neighborhoods uh, from where I live and we try to take different paths. And it's funny how you're walking on the sidewalk when there's not that much room and you'll see someone cross the street just so you're not walking next to each other, which is, I, I, I'm glad to see that. And I, I try to do that myself or just jump onto the street a little bit with no cars coming and pass by. But a lot of people are out with the dogs. Uh, I've been walking all times of day, families, families with bikes. So um, I think a lot of people, and I guess last night, I wasn't aware of this, but I guess uh, the uh, uh, 
one of the space stations was possibly visible uh, from the sky at about eight o'clock. I saw some families trying to see that. Um, wasn't aware of that, but um, that allegedly happened last night. Um, so yeah, I, I think as far as guidance goes, I know you know Mark and I spoke offline about kind of you know, everyone trying to do their part, as Bob mentioned in the beginning, and you know Chief Clark and and everyone else from last week that we really have to do our best so we can get back to some kind of normalcy. Right, absolutely. Hopefully sooner than than later. Um, just to add what you were saying too, Carlo, interesting, even as we're kind of crossing the street to get out of the way, I found people to voluntarily say hi and make a point to say hi and actually have some social social contact at, at appropriate awesome. distance. Yeah. Social mon contact. <laughs> yeah, and it's been really nice. And, and truthfully, a lot of them have been um, you know younger people as well. Um, just kind of, you know, seeing someone and, and saying hello. So um, any other uh, questions or, or, or comments, anything else that um, you might want to see on the agenda for, for next week? I think we have a lot to do next week, so that's good. Yeah, I think yeah. we do have a lot to do next week. Um, yeah, and it'll be great to get the updates um, as it relates to uh, some of the the the, uh, the road diet and, and those other activities. Um, we do have the public hearing that's scheduled. We'll have to make a decision on what we're going to do about that, how we're going to do that. Um, is that something that we can talk about here, or is that something we can't? Um, I would just broadly ask. If there's anything that any members want in the packet, um, please send it in the morning. We're going to try to send the packet out by midday. Um, in terms of downtown parking, that's the reason that the community development staff are there. Um, I have not spoken to them directly, but I have t I talked to them a week or so ago, and there is no point in continuing a public hearing where the public can't be there. And we don't see any sense at all in discussing downtown parking when things are so different. So I would assume we just let the hearing lapse and then re-advertise it in the future when it's appropriate. But the staff may have a few additional thoughts, but that's the main idea. Thank you, very helpful. Okay, any last topics? Good, I would entertain a motion. Well, that's me, sorry. Uh, mo <laughs> sorry, uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. So I have a second. Oh, I couldn't hear the second. Do we have a second? Second. Karen is second. Uh, oh, we have to do roll call. I'm sorry. Uh, Carlo? Yes. Aye. Karen? Yes. Vanessa? Yes. Anne? Yes. And Mark? Yes. We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Bob. Take care, everyone. Stay Thank well. You.